hello, this is Bishop Ron C. Hill, and uh, I'm blessed to be the pastor of the Love uh, and uh, Unity Church of God in Christ, 1840 South Wimbledon Avenue, right in City of Common, California, and I believe God. I want to thank and praise God for the victory. The Bible says, thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory. I am in a mode of having a victory today, and I thank and praise God that I have the confidence that no weapons formed against me shall prosper. I believe that I'm going to come out fine by faith in Jesus' name. I believe that um, a young virgin girl by the name of Mary got pregnant by way of the Holy Ghost. I believe that the third person of the Trinity uh, planted Christ, uh, the anointed one, in the womb of Mary. And I believe that that took place because Adam had uh, violated uh, the word of God in the Garden of Eden, and God had a plan, and it's called the plan of salvation. God had planned to put himself in the womb of a girl so that he could become the sin sacrifice for the whole world. It was a man, get this now, it was a man that caused humanity to be plunged into sin. Adam was a flesh and blood man, and when he defied God and disobeyed God, it caused all of us to become sinners. So God had to have a man to undo what the first man had done. The first man, Adam, failed God, but the second man, Adam, obeyed God. And he has opened up the portal for anybody who would believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. For anybody who believes that he uh, was whipped and beaten and, 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 and spit on it, and they put, they put his beard out, and they put a crown of thorns on his head, and he was marred like no other man. They beat him and whipped him and beat him and whipped him and beat him and whipped him, and then they nailed Jesus to the cross, and they shed that, per that perfect holy blood. And that perfect holy blood became the sin sacrifice for fallen humanity. Now, holy God, can forgive any rank sinner. And it doesn't matter how bad you've been. Anybody who is in sin, they're in sin because of what Adam did. It was Adam, again, that, that defied God and caused all of us to become sinners. The, the name of the fruit that he partook of was a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And, and by the way, by the way, I don't know what it tastes like. Uh, obviously, it was good to him, but I didn't get a chance to taste it. Neither did you. But he did it on our behalf. What Adam did in the Garden of Eden was that he was representing the human race. Do you get that? The reason why you were born in sin is because Adam, the first man God created, was representing humanity when he defied God. Now, the second man, Adam, born of the Virgin Mary, you know who I'm talking about, don't you? Jesus Christ the Lord. Now, he died on that cross, and he was representing mankind. When Jesus suffered and bled and died on the cross, he was dying for mankind. He was representing us on that cross. When Jesus died on that cross, we died with him. When he went into the tomb, we went with him because he was representing us. Glory to God. And so when you believe the gospel, when you believe in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and when you repent of your sins and accept Christ as your Savior, you get transitioned out of the kingdom of darkness, and you get brought into the kingdom of God's dear son. You get resurrected from the dead. You were dead in trespasses and in sins. But the moment you believe the gospel 
you repented of your sins and you got raised from the dead spiritually. And now you are alive in God. Glory to God, brother. I mean, you are a part of the very body of Christ. You are seated in heavenly places in Christ. You are the body of Christ and Christ is the head. Glory to God. And now we've got to get you animated and, and, and oriented, I should say, towards the word of God. You've got to know and order for you to be successful in walking out whom God has made you, it is incumbent upon you to become a student of the word of God. I said all of that to get to this. You must become a student of the word of God. Read the word. Study the word. Memorize the word. Meditate in the word. And above everything else, trust and obey the word. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you that if you do what I'm telling you to do right here, and if you believe what I said about that gospel, and if you have repented of your sins, and if you have accepted Christ as your Savior, there is a wonderful, wonderful life waiting on you. But you have to get into the word yourself. Stop depending on preachers and other people to do your study for you. Yes, we're here to help you. As a man of God, women of God out there as well, we're here to help you. And But we're here to point you to the word, not to us. Anytime some preacher is always magnifying himself, don't, don't, don't walk, run from him because he's of the devil. The real men and women of God, they will point you to the word and they will tell you, obey the word of God. Obey the word of God. They'll tell you, get full of the word. They'll tell you, trust the word. And they'll tell you, by faith, obey the word because once you have been born again and you began to act on the word of God, the, 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 the God of the universe, will always keep his word. And he's going to bring you out of there. It's sure. He's going to bring you out more than a conqueror uh, in the name of Jesus because he has to keep his word. Brother and sister, listen, why, why do you think the devil is always fighting you to try to keep you out of the word? He doesn't want you to read it. He doesn't want you to study. As a matter of fact, I've heard some major preachers make negative statements about, oh, you don't need to memorize all them scriptures, and you don't need to be doing all that praying, and you need to be doing all that fasting. Anybody who says that, one of two things. They are ignorant or they are of the devil. One of the two. Never fight the word of God. Get full of the word of God. And, and by the way, yes, yes, yes. It, it, you can know the Bible from Genesis to Revelation and still not have the victory. But if you know the Bible from Genesis to Revelation and you do it, you can't get nothing but the victory. So the word of God and the Holy Ghost operates in tandem. You need both of them operating in your life. The word of God and the spirit of God are in complete agreement. And that's where you're going to come out. Now, we're going to deal with a principle today that, that many of you need to hear this. Because, listen, folks, it's becoming more and more expensive to live in America. I took my wife out to a restaurant we used to go to quite a bit. And when I looked at the bill, I thought, what? Are you kidding me? They are charging more for everything in this country. And I want you to know that it is God's will that you have all the money that you need. But you can't have the, all the money that you need if you are not a tither and an offering giver. I want to challenge you today to get into to paying your tithe and get into giving a liberal offering so that you can put yourself in position for God to honor you. And somebody says, oh, I don't believe in paying tithe anymore. Well, don't call it tithe. Just call it something else. But just make sure you give God 10%. Because I guarantee you, friends, there are those of us who's been paying tithe for 45 and 50 years. And we don't care what the mother preachers say about it. They can say whatever they want to say about it. You ain't going to stop me from paying tithes, Buster. No way. Because I'm blessed. I am blessed 
by paying tithe and giving offerings. I have all the money that I need. I have all the money that I need to live the way I desire to live because I pay tithe and I give offerings. And I'm challenging you today to know that if you're having financial problems, you're going to have to give your way out of it. You can't pray your way out of it. You got to pray and give and you'll come out. Note here in the book of Luke chapter 6 and putting in at verse 38, give and it shall be given unto you good measure pressed down and shaken together and running over shall men give into your bosom for with the same measure that you meet with all it shall be measured to you again thank and praise god that god is a god who keeps his word and by the way it is impossible for you to pay your tithe and give liberal offerings and spend your money wisely and you end up broke, impossible. A lot of pastors and preachers, churches are broke because oftentimes these pastors, they take too much of the money to come into the church. I, I, I've, I've never been that guy. When we started this church, I never would take more money out of the church than I would leave in the church. Consequently, this church ain't broke today. I, I don't ask people to support this church because the church is broke. I ask people to support this church for their own good. It's good to support a church where people are, give, are being born again, where people are being baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost, where people are being healed in the body, and where people are growing in their faith. That's the place to put your money because it's anointed to do so. But I'm not here begging because I'm broke. No, 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 sir. Because we give. This church gives. Uh, uh, matter, matter of fact, now, now this is not a lot of money, but... The largest offering that I've given to the Lord was $50,000. When we were attempting to pay off this property, I gave my wife and I, not just me, my wife and I gave an offering of $50,000. And you know what, friends? Uh, we owed about $400,000 on our home. And after we gave that $50,000, God made it possible for us to pay that $450,000 off completely. We don't want a dime on that house today. But guess how he got there? We gave $50,000 to the work of God, and it opened up the door for God to pay our property off. I'm saying to somebody today, if you would send this ministry a significant offering, you know who you are. You know that I'm anointed. You know that you've been fed the word of God. And if you would step out and give a significant offering to this ministry, God's going to do something special in your life. And, and not only that, during that same time, before then, God told me to give preachers during the pandemic $2,000 each. I thought it was going to be maybe 10 or 12 preachers. It ended up being 45 preachers. We gave 45 preachers $2,000 each. We owed $1.4 million on this property. After we gave those preachers $2,000 each, and there was 45 of them to the tune of $90,000, God sent the $1.4 million to pay the property off. And we're right here in Compton. We're not, in, we're not on the west side, and we're not in Beverly Hills. We are here in Compton with a lot of people, uh, the, the, the black and brown people, who would people say don't have the money. But listen, we gave our way into being debt free. We gave our way into having a church debt free. Why? Because God said it. And you need to hear it when God tell you to give. You need to hear it because he's got something special for you. Note here in the book of St. Matthews, chapter 19, putting in at verse number 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good things shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. And they would keep the word. Verse 18, and he said unto him, which? Jesus said, thou shalt not do, thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not uh, bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, 
and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man said unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? So the young man was saying, Listen, I, I, I don't kill anybody. I'm not committing adultery. I don't steal. I'm not a liar. I honor my father. I honor my parents. And he said, What lack I yet? Listen to what Jesus told him. Uh, Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. Verse 22, But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. This young man had the opportunity to follow Jesus and to become one of his uh, special apostles. He could have become the 13th apostle. We don't know. But Jesus told him, like he told Peter and John and James and the rest of them, come and follow me. He told this young man, come and follow me. But the young man was sad. And why was he sad? Because the young man loved money. And this is the reason why a lot of people aren't doing well in the church. Because they love money. They love materialism. They love stuff more than they love God. And many pastors in the church today, they love materialism more than they love winning souls to Christ. I see some people on television today giving the plan of salvation. It is so flimsy, it's pitiful. Just say this prayer. Now, and then you say, no, no. People need to hear the, about the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus if they're going to get saved. But many times, people just tag that onto the end of that program to say, I got everything covered. But you preachers on television, on radio, on the internet, if you want to try to get people to Jesus, preach the gospel. You have to believe the gospel. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but shall have everlasting life. The Bible said these words, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So people need to be taught and trained. Listen, folks, salvation is based upon your believing in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. You are believing in his blood. And, and let people have a chance to think and, and decide whether they believe that. But many people today are more concerned about People having money and houses and cars and getting healed in the body and everything out like that. But may I tell you, friends, listen, the most important thing you possess is your soul. What would it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Your soul and the souls of men and women, boys and girls, is the most important thing in the world. But you have to have money. You have to have money in order to be in soul business. I'm in the soul business, and I have to have money to get here, friends. I'm in soul winning, and we have full-time full staff members, and all they do is knock on doors. We've knocked on every door in the city of Compton three times, and when we got started, Compton used to be the murder capital of America. The gangs were rampant in Compton. Helicopters was flying over in Compton. Our church got broken into. I got shot at. We have a, the, the security guard had a shootout in front of the church. It was bullets flying everywhere right here in Compton. But when we got involved with the Great Commission, knocked on every door three times, preaching on street corners, started giving food and clothes to the poor, and started doing the real work of God, Compton is not nearly as bad as it used to be. Why? Because of the power of Christ's blood and the power of the Holy Ghost and the power of the Word of God and for people who are bold enough to get out there and preach Christ's gospel. It, it will work in any city. 
that, that, that's been ravaged by sin and Satan. So let me finish about this giving business. Now, now many of you are, are having financial issues. I challenge you to get into paying your tithe, get into giving liberal offerings, and go after living holy and tell sinners about Jesus. That's a mouthful, I know, I know. Listen, get into repentance. Get into it. Don't just give money because you want money. First of all, give God your heart. Give God your body. Give God your time. Give God your talents. Give God your time. In other words, give God everything. Don't just come around God trying to try to pimp God and want to use God as a sugar daddy. Oh, just to give the money. God's going to give you this and he's going to give you that. And you're just giving it to get money from God. That's, that's perverted. Don't, don't just give to get stuff from God. Give because he said do it. But understand that God wants more than your money. God wants your body. He wants you to present your body as a living sacrifice. God wants your time. God wants your talents and your resources. And I guarantee you this, friends, it is impossible to give God uh, your life on this order and you stay broke. I was so broke at one time I couldn't pay attention. Thumb into church and thumbing back home. But internally, I knew that God had told me to quit that job. And internally, I knew that if I would sanctify myself, that if I would consecrate myself to prayer and prayer and fasting and Bible reading and, and getting under the blood of Jesus and resisting the devil and casting the devil out of my mind and, and, and rebuking him and standing in an attitude of, of holiness, I knew that God was going to honor my faith and my life, and he did. Let me get into this before we go. Note here, in 1 Kings chapter 17, uh, and putting in at verse number 2, and the word of the Lord uh, came unto him, saying, uh, uh, to, to Elisha, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Shereth, that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord. For he went and dwelt by the brook Shereth, that is before Jordan. And the ravens bought him bread and flesh in the mornings, and bread and flesh in the evenings, and he drink of the brook. And that tells me, friends, we only need two meals a day. A lot of us eat too much in this country. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You don't need all them meals. If, if God gave this preacher two meals a day, and two meals a day is enough for you, praise God. And it came to pass after a while that, he, that the brook dried up because there was no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get ye to Zerapath which belongeth to Zion, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there, gathering to up sticks, and he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water and a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. Uh, and uh, she said, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathered two sticks, that I may go and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. That's a dire situation. But you note that he, she knew he was a man of God because she told him, as the Lord your God liveth. In other words, she knew that Elijah was a man of God. When, a, when somebody's asking you for your hard-earned money, and in terms of the spiritual world, you better know you're talking to a real man of God. There's a lot of charlatans out there. There are a lot of liars out there. And the only thing they want from you is your money. But you need to be able to discern whether or not the man or the woman who speaketh to you is of God. Verse 13, And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. For thus said the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the crucible fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain 
upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not. Neither did the cruise of oil fail according to the word of the Lord which he spake by Elijah. I got a word for somebody. You sent a significant offering into this ministry. First of all, repent of all of your sins. Repent of your sins and commit yourself to the word of God. We just don't want you to send money in here. We want you to commit yourself to living holy. Commit yourself to walking in God's love. Commit yourself to being full of and led by Holy Ghost. And send that offering in here. Because when you repent of your sins and start getting into the word of God with a sincere heart, and, and a heart that said, I'm dedicated. You may fall on your face tomorrow, get back up and get started again. You may fall on your face the next day, get back up and get started again. Stay in the word. Read the word. Study the word. Memorize the word. Meditate in the word. And trust and obey the word. And you plant financial seed where the anointing is flowing. And, and you'll open the door for God to do something special in your life. And so I'm talking to you, sir. I'm talking to you, ma'am. If you believe that I'm a man of God, send whatever offering God tells you. If he tells you send $5,000, do it. $20,000, do it. $1,000, do it. $500, do it. Whatever God tells you to send this ministry, I promise you in the name of Jesus that this ministry is anointed and souls are being blessed and God is moving in it and it will be a blessing to you. Now, Father, right now, I pray in the name of Jesus for every man and every woman who has sent in a significant offering. I pray for their families, their marriages, their children, their grandchildren, their family, nieces and nephews. I pray for their physical health. I pray for their social well-being. I pray for their business. Yes, yes, yes. Businesses are going to be blessed by this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Businesses are going to get blessed by this by faith in the name of Jesus. And, and look, look, get on the number, get the number and call us and let us know you're going to be a part. Mm -hmm. Next time. Consider financially supporting Food for Your Soul television broadcasts. Together, we can change lives. Your support will allow us to reach the world with the good news that Jesus saves. You can give online at loveandunity.org. Click the Give button and it will take you to our secure page where you'll have the option to give by credit card, debit card, or bank account. You can set up a one-time or reoccurring gift by linking your preferred payment method. You can also text a gift by texting the amount you desire to 310-507-1181 or mail to P.O. Box 5449, Compton, California, 90224. Thank you in advance for your support.